The world eats an estimated 100 billion bananas every year. But the staple fruit is under threat from climate change and crop disease. Chiquita bananas. You may have heard that they're delicious, but did you know that they also have a dark secret? Chiquita bananas was once responsible for funding right-wing paramilitary groups in Colombia. What would make a fruit company do such a thing? And most importantly, that's not all. In this video, we'll uncover the darkest secrets of Chiquita Bananas and show you why you may want to think twice before buying their products. The company's origins and early struggles provide a fascinating glimpse into the turbulent history of this enterprise. In a video from 2019, the focus was on the impact of European trade laws and the weight of the company's debt. This snapshot reveals a company grappling with external pressures, setting the stage for its eventual transformation. One pivotal moment in its history was the brink of bankruptcy in 2001. This financial crisis underscored the fragility of the enterprise and the need for innovative solutions to stay afloat. It was a turning point that would ultimately shape the company's future trajectory. At the heart of the company's evolution stands the enigmatic figure of miner Cooper Keith. His journey began far from the world of bananas as a cattle businessman in the heartland of Texas. However, he embarked on a remarkable venture, the construction of an extensive railroad in the challenging terrain of Costa Rica. This ambitious project spanned nearly two decades, during which the company encountered numerous financial hardships. One intriguing aspect of this railway project was the establishment of banana plantations alongside the tracks. These plantations served a dual purpose. Not only did they provide sustenance for the tireless workers toiling on the railroad, but they also sowed the seeds of a transformation. The humble banana, initially a source of sustenance, would soon become the focal point of the company's identity. This early history of the company paints a vivid picture of resilience and adaptation. From struggling under the weight of debt and bankruptcy to the audacious vision of miner Cooper Keith, it's a tale of triumph over adversity. The banana plantations, initially a means of survival, would eventually become emblematic of the company's journey. How did the challenges and controversies faced in United Fruit's formative years shape its future role in the banana industry? These formative years laid the foundation for the company's future as a major player in the banana industry. The challenges faced in the past would serve as a crucible, forging a company capable of navigating complex global markets and controversies, as we've seen in subsequent years. It's a testament to the enduring spirit of entrepreneurship and innovation that has defined this company throughout its history. The formation of United Fruit and the emergence of the infamous Banana Republics Mark a pivotal chapter in the company's history marked by collaboration, expansion, and unfortunately, questionably, questionable labor practices. At the heart of this narrative are Captain Lorenzo Baker and Andrew Preston, two enterprising individuals who recognize the potential of the banana trade. Together, they founded the Boston Fruit Company, a modest beginning for an enterprise that would ultimately wield significant influence in Central America. In 1899, a transformative merger took place. The Boston Fruit Company joined forces with other enterprises, culminating in the birth of United Fruit. This merger was a game-changer, propelling the company into a position of dominance within the banana industry. With resources and reach amplified, United Fruit was poised to shape the economic and political landscape of Central America. One of the key facets of United Fruit's rise to power was its ability to gain control over land and critical infrastructure in Central American nations. This influence extended to telecommunication networks and vast swaths of land, fundamentally altering the economic dynamics of these countries. It was during this period that the term banana republics emerged, describing nations heavily reliant on foreign corporations like United Fruit purchasing a single product, bananas. While United Fruit's growth and expansion were economically significant, they came at a human cost. Workers on the company's plantations faced questionable treatment and labor conditions. These laborers were often subjected to challenging working conditions, long hours, and meager wages. The company's control over these regions allowed for limited workers' rights, contributing to a troubling chapter in labor history. 
How did the collaboration between Captain Lorenzo Baker and Andrew Preston lead to United Fruit's rise to power and the controversies surrounding its labor practices in Central America? The formation of United Fruit and the emergence of banana republics are intertwined narratives of corporate expansion and exploitation. The collaboration between Captain Lorenzo Baker and Andrew Preston paved the way for a company that would wield immense power in Central America. Yet, this power came at a price, as the company's control over land and infrastructure gave rise to labor practices that would become synonymous with controversy and exploitation. These early chapters in the company's history foreshadowed the controversies that would continue to dog United Fruit in the years to come. If you are enjoying this video so far, then take a moment to like it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. The marketing strategies and controversies surrounding United Fruit provide a rich tapestry of the company's actions, both in boosting banana popularity and navigating complex political landscapes. In 1944, United Fruit embarked on a marketing journey that would redefine how bananas were perceived. They introduced the brand name Chiquita for their bananas. This seemingly simple branding decision had profound implications. It allowed United Fruit to personalize their product and create a memorable image for consumers. To further cement their position in the market, United Fruit launched an aggressive advertising campaign featuring Miss Chiquita. This animated character became an iconic symbol, appearing in ads across various media. Through this campaign, United Fruit not only promoted its brand, but also popularized bananas as a convenient and healthy snack. It was a marketing triumph that resonated with consumers, shaping their perceptions of bananas for years to come. Amidst this marketing success, a significant controversy emerged in the form of Jacob Arbenz, the leader of Guatemala. Arbenz introduced land redistribution policies aimed at addressing the stark wealth disparities in the country. However, United Fruit viewed these policies as communism a label that would have dire consequences. The company's influence extended to U.S. policymakers who supported its claims. How did United Fruit's involvement in the removal of Arbenz in Guatemala highlight the connection between corporate interests, geopolitics, and the subsequent political unrest? This political maneuvering resulted in Arbenz's removal from power and trig decades of political unrest in Guatemala. The controversy highlighted the intertwining of corporate interests and geopolitics, with United Fruit playing a pivotal role. In a bid to diversify its portfolio, United Fruit expanded into other industries, notably acquiring a pairing a uh, these acquisitions showcased the company's ambition to move beyond its banana-centric identity. However, another twist in United Fruit's history emerged with the arrival of Eli Black. He purchased United Fruit and implemented significant changes, including merging it with his meat company. The company's name was changed to United Brands, reflecting this transformation. Eli Black's tenure was marred by controversy when it was revealed that he authorized bribes to reduce export taxes, sparking outrage and investigations. The ensuing scandal put a spotlight on the company's questionable practices. Tragically, Eli Black's mysterious death further deepened suspicions surrounding the company. His death, characterized by a dramatic fall from a New York building, raised questions about its timing and potential connections to the bribery scandal. The controversies involving terrorism and their impact on United Fruit reveal a dark chapter in a company's history, tarnishing its reputation and illustrating its involvement in ethically dubious activity. One of the most shocking revelations came when United Fruit admitted to making payments to Colombian terrorists between 1997 and 2004. The recipients of these payments were members of the Autodefenses Unidas de Colombia, or AUC, an organization deeply involved in drug trafficking and recognized as a terrorist group by the United States. This admission sent shockwaves through the corporate world, highlighting the company's involvement with a dangerous criminal organization. The consequences were significant. United Fruit faced severe legal repercussions and paid a staggering $25 million fine for its role in supporting terrorism. This 
Financial penalty was a clear acknowledgement of the company's wrongdoing and further damaged its standing in the eyes of the public. These revelations cast a long shadow over United Fruit's history. The company's association with terrorists and its willingness to engage in unethical practices had far-reaching implications. It eroded trust not only in United Fruit, but also in the banana industry as a whole. The impact extended beyond legal penalties. The company's reputation was forever marred, and it became emblematic of corporate wrongdoing. United Fruit's history of controversies and negative associations persisted, making it a cautionary tale in the annals of corporate ethics. Now, if you find this video informative, then don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Meanwhile, thanks for watching.